I won't pretend that I don't know what a multiverse is because I've seen the matrix after watching your video. Um, but I suspect that this is what you mean when you say multiverse, but maybe we should define what you mean by multiverse. You know, in uh, each and every profession, we develop an ar arcane language, which is inaccessible to laymen. Why? Because it feels good. A jargon. A, a, yeah, a jargon or a, yeah, a lingo. For instance, uh, yeah. doctors will say, physicians will say, yeah. he made hepatitis, you know? <laughs> he made. Yeah, but they would, they would say hepatitis, not liver disease. Yes, he made a cardiac the, arrest. The, the, the main... The, this is a bizarre form of language. And by the way, in linguistic theory, I didn't come across too much. They didn't dedicate thought to this. They are languages intended to communicate. Wittgenstein said, said there's no such thing as a private language. The main aim of a language is to communicate. So, but their language is intended to obscure, not to communicate. Language is intended to, to, to obstruct communication. And I think all the professional lingos, professional jargons, they're intended to obstruct communication. Or yeah. to limit, to limit, to limit communication it to, to, the, to the social to the group, group, uh, to the group. They, they want. Which, which kind of falsifies Wittgenstein, because Wittgenstein said that the private language should be universally accessible, and com uh, a language, I'm sorry, should be universally accessible and communicable, and therefore there's no possibility of a private language. And I think he was seriously wrong. Well, by the way. Ha you have dialects and you have idiolects. Dialects, idiolects. Idiolect. And if, you if you've ever treated a psychotic patient, you know that psychotic patients definitely have their own language. That's an idiolect. Which is utterly inaccessible to, to anyone. Okay. But to them, it's totally comprehensible. They use it to communicate internally. This is the language which they speak to, them they to themselves. They speak yeah. to themselves. So to I, I think Wittgenstein wasn't wrong often, but on this he was dead wrong, okay. seriously wrong. Why am I mentioning this? Because multiverse in physics is not, not the same as multiverse in the matrix. In physics, multiverse has to do with something called the wave function. Now to explain what is a wave function, when we ask ourselves where, where in which position, in which location are we going to find a specific elementary particle? An electron, a neutron, a whatever. A quark? A quark you cannot find. That's the constituent of elementary particles. Okay, so you told me in an earlier yeah. uh, talk that a quark cannot be seen. It cannot be seen even, I think, in principle. It's, uh, because it's, a, it's more of a language element, if okay. you wish. Apropos so beginning. what you can see is electrons, yeah, protons, see electrons neutrons. protons, neutrons, and so on. But, you, but there is the Heisenberg uncertainty principles. So you ask yourself, where am I going to see it? And you don't know the answer. What you do know, that there is a, a wave of probabilities. Yes. So you know that there's 50% chance that you will see it here, 7% chance you will see it here, 1% chance you will see it here, and then you connect the dots and, and you, you get a wave. You get a wave. You get a wave. And this is called the wave function. But then there's a question. You make a measurement in a laboratory. You make a measurement and here is the, here is the particle. Here's the dot. What happened to all the rest? What happened to all these probabilities? Exactly. And so the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, the group of people who convened in Solvay, Copenhagen okay. in the 20s, they said the other parts existed as a potential in principle, yes. but the minute you conducted a measurement, you forced all of them into that location. And this process is called collapse. Mm -hmm. You, pros you forced, you compressed the wave function and you into made it into a dot. A specific dot. In, into a point. So this gives you a lot of power. It means that you had decided where the dot is and even to a very large extent you had created the dot because the dot is, in, is energy. So you kind of brought all this energy by, by the mere... By the mere looking By of merely your eyes. looking, by merely measuring, by the mere act of your will. And, and determination and decision, you had moved this energy to a specific location and you made it into a particle. It's a lot of power. So many physicists don't feel comfortable with this. They say, we don't believe that observing or measuring can create the world. With something, something the hypothesis yeah. is that to, to have a universe, you need an observer. That without the observer, yeah. there is no According to universe. Copenhagen interpretation. 
Now, Einstein, for example, was dead set against this. Einstein said, this is nonsense. There's no way. Reality exists regardless of obs observers. It's there. It's objective. It's deterministic. No need for observers. But then you have to explain what happens to all the other options. Why they vanish suddenly. Also, how yeah. do you know? Yeah. Because you're a human. Even you, Einstein, are, you, are a human being. And, and you, you deal with observing. So, yeah. so how do you know that without you, the world still exists? Exactly. So, in other words, what's the role of observation and measurement? And there is an, the issue of what happens to the rest of the wave function. Okay. Not the collapse part, but the rest of it. Yes. So here comes the many worlds theory. Many worlds theory says every part of the wave function collapses, but in different universes. So one part collapses in one universe, another. So we have like a multiverse, many universes. And the wave function re is actualized and materialized but only a tiny part of it in our universe. Okay. And the rest in other universes. There is an artistic manifestation of this view, a beautiful movie by the name of Sliding Doors, where two options are being taken, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, from one incident. And the, the camera focuses on these two incidents. What happens? If she does make it to the subway or if she doesn't make exactly, it to the, exactly. to the subway. According to this interpretation, known as the many worlds interpretation, according to this second interpretation, every decision on a macro level or, or micro level, every decision creates a universe. So here's, here's my eyeglasses. I say, should I pick them up or not? Okay, I'm picking them up. The minute I pick them up, the split second I pick them up, there's another universe. Where I, did, why, where I did not pick them up. Okay, so now, since you picked them up, I'll pick them up. There are two universes now. And four, the reason why I picked them up was because you picked yours up. Okay. So this is the universe we created. This is our universe. Now, when but I there are other put them on the table... But there are other universes where I hadn't picked up my glasses, you hadn't picked up your glasses, yes, and or we you were, had picked up your glasses. We were glass, and I didn't, glassless. Exactly. Yes, so... We, there's a, this explosion of universes all the okay, time. Okay, so this, this is, is the multiverse. multiverse. Okay, and this now is the question is, yeah. is the multiverse a useful concept? This not as it question. is, in my view. Not as it is, because it's not a scientific theory. It cannot be tested. We have no access to these other universes. There are all kinds of recent uh, kind of speculations that these universes will somehow resonate with ours or that will be like an entry point, a portal between our universe and these universes, for example, through a white hole, white, uh, hole um, the opposite of a black hole. And white hole or uh, worm? Wormhole, worm no. Wormhole is, is a shortcut inside, the, inside our universe, the universe. Inside our universe. But a white hole is opposite of black hole. Okay. Never mind. So there are many speculations. that it, It's possible there's an interface between our universe and the other universes, and therefore, that we'll be able to yield predictions and so on. But at this stage, it's not a scientific theory in my view. And we will discuss it in our next talk. This is where physics begins to slide into mysticism and metaphysics. Because uh, the minute you cannot test and falsify, it's not science. Did Nietzsche uh, uh, hypothesize that, that everything that could have happened has happened? And that the universe is recurring and recurring and recurring? Long before Nietzsche, you have it in the, in the Vedic writings and so on. Long before Nietzsche. But, um, so it's not a verifiable thing. I, I'm trying in my work to reconcile the Copenhagen interpretation with the many worlds interpretation. I'm, I'm trying to put them together. Because each one of them offers benefits. So there are two, there are two views? There are, there's the Copenhagen, that the, observer, the, the no. observer determines the universe. Okay. And there's the many worlds, which, okay. which, in which the observer doesn't determine the universe, the universe simply splits. Okay, and into many, many yeah. universes. Many universes. Yeah. Where, and everything that can happen does M happen. Many, many, when you say many, you mean infinite? Infinite. 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 So I'm trying to be a little, with a fit to the ground, a little more grounded. <laughs> And um, perhaps because of my background as a businessman, you know, I don't tolerate uh, such fuzzy thinking too much. So I'm trying to put the two together. 
And I'm saying actually the observer does matter. And yes, there are many universes. But I'm combining them, combining it in a, in a highly specific way. Here's what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting that we should think of our universe as a filter. Now there's a special type of filter, it's called PLL filter or matched filter. But for, for the sake of our conversation, let us not go into what is a PLL filter, which is a mathematical thing, never mind all this. Okay. Let's, let's think of the Forget universe. the term? No. Search it, search it at your leisure. Okay. But okay. let's not introduce it into our conversation because that's way too much, way, way beyond most people. It's, it's a mathematical construct, basically, which had been translated into real life filters, which you have in your, in your audio system and so on. But I'm using this specific mathematical description of a filter called the PLL filter. But we, we might as well think of it as a filter, just a filter with holes, with holes. And what I'm suggesting is, our universe is a filter. What passes through this filter? The collapsed states. In other words, think of, the un of our universe as a wall with holes, yes. many holes. A the, collapsed phase, a the collapsed phases pass. Yes. And what is left in the sieve is out. Is, is it's outside our universe. Is our own universe, the, the only yes, what's one. Yes, what's, what's left inside. What, has, what had crossed the membrane, what had crossed the filter, is the collapsed states. And what is left is our own single what, universe. What had not crossed the filter yes, yes. is this multiverse or whatever. But what had crossed the filter is what we observe, what we measure. Ah, this is what crossed, I see. Yeah, that is what is crossed. So, it's like there's a wall here with walls, with holes, and we are two physicists, and we are trying to measure a wave function. This wall, this sieve, will let through to us only the collapsed states that we will ultimately measure. I see. So how does this solve anything? Yes, right. It gets rid of the issue of uh, a reality created by an observer. It's not that we create anything. It's just that the, the universe filters certain results for us. Therefore, we keep encountering these results. And what about the, the multiverse and so on and so forth? Actually, my theory, my theory says that it doesn't matter. What remains in the multiverse is what we call noise, noise. Noise. So what we get is the signal what remains outside the sea is white noise. Is noise, white noise in effect, yes. That's P in PLL, it's, the PLL does this. What a PLL filter does, it lets in only highly specific outcomes and keeps out, so it has a, a very good signal to noise ratio. If you, if you th reconceive of, the, of our universe as a kind of filter, you reconcile perfectly the two views of quantum mechanics. You reconcile them perfectly because you get rid of the observer as godlike, the observer as creating the... Listen, intuitively, we revolt against this idea that we are creating reality. Yes. We, we have a revulsion against this. We yes. say it's, it's yes. completely real. I mean, Marian and his three cameras... Yes, we want to be sure that this is reality. Yeah. Probably when we leave, he will still be here, I think. Right, probably. I mean, I, mean, I hope, still... I hope we have to meet yes. him tomorrow again. So. It's counterintuitive and it's also, I would say, intellectually revolting to say that I'm creating Marian because I'm observing him. It's, there's something even childish about it, you know? Yes, right. On the one hand. On the other hand, this multiverse sounds extremely nonsensical. It's, it's like a medieval speculation. It, it's, it's, meaning, it's all science. There's no science there. So both interpretations of quantum mechanics are really lacking, really deficient. But if you, if you put them together and you say, it's not you, the, the locus and the onus is not on you, it's the universe. The universe dictates to you certain outcomes. The universe keeps out other outcomes. And so you are exposed only to what the universe wants you to see. May we say that the fact that we have a brain is that is what creates this filter and we also mentioned in one of our talks that the brain is the the organ that 
gives us the possibility to remain sane by the fact that we don't see all this noise. Benny, only some of us remain sane. <laughs> Not everyone. Not everyone. Don't speak for yourself. <laughs> okay. No. Excellent question. Again, my compliments. You're, you're harking back. You're going back to our, actually, I think, first conversation. Okay. Yes, exactly. I'm saying the universe is a filter, so it presents to you only the collapsed states and keeps out the noise. So there's no... If, if, whether there are many universes or there are not many universes... It's immaterial. It's immaterial. And so we should stop talking about this. It's mystic. Mysticism is not physics. What happens, what happens this side of the filter is of interest to us. Is of interest to us. But the filter takes care of it. Not you as an observer. The filter takes... Okay. Now what is the filter? And this is where I link to... As you just did, I link it to yesterday. Yes, I think because we are part of nature, we are the universe. I think our brains collectively and the brains of all intelligence and the brains of all life, life as a phenomenon, wherever it may be, generates this filter collectively. Generates this filter, but it doesn't make it less real. That we had generated the filter doesn't make it less real. Now, why is this preferable? to the Copenhagen interpretation, because Copenhagen interpretation says that you have to create everything. You have to create this particle and that particle and the table that is composed of all these particles. And I have to create Benny Handel also. And I have to create Marian. And that's a lot of work. I have to... So, so when you take the Copenhagen interpretation ad absurdum, it becomes absurd, simply. Not so in my work. In my work, the observer does create the filter. Yes, true. But he doesn't but create the universe. But once he had created the filter, he rests. Okay. Exactly like God. What did God do? He created the world and, and then, then he, he rested. rested. Same with the observers. They create the filter and they can rest now. The filter will take care of everything. The filter will create the collapsed states and so on. What is the filter? The universe. That's the filter. So I, it's not mysticism. This is just the way the universe is. Indeed, the universe per force must be, ipso facto, must be the collapsed states. Because the universe is there. Right. <laughs> Had it not been the collapsed states, it would not have been there. Right. Yes. The very fact that it is there proves that it is a filter. Proves that it is the assemblage of all collapsed states in history long before we existed. So, that's a core issue in all the interpretations of quantum mechanics. Who observed before we existed? So here we tie a little with the chronon thing. We are very limited, of course. Our brains are limited and so on. So we have this perception of past, future, present. Right. And Einstein already said that it's a wrong perception. There's no such thing as past, present, future. But time is a given block. It's a given, you know, it's given as it is. And even if you read religious texts, they also imply, hint, that in the eyes of God, there's no time. But God is timeless. Since ti God is timeless? Yes, there's no time. There's no time. He, sees, he sees synoptically everything and so on. I think that we have created the filter also retroactively. In other words, the act of sentience and intelligence is not limited to what we call the present or what we call the future, but must have recreated the past. Now this is this this follows Stephen Hawking's work. This is not this, this, is not, this follows in, in the footsteps of giants. This is exactly what Stephen Hawking says. Stephen Hawking said that in our act of measurement and observation, we had created the past, not only the future. He said it in, in mathematics, but that's what he's saying. I agree fully. I think we had created the past. But that has a, a, a major philosophical um, implication. Before we started observing and measuring, the universe was not the same. He was, it was not a filter. The minute we started to observe and to measure, we had transformed the past of the universe and redesigned it as a filter. Before that, it was not a filter. So, before 
before sentient and intelligent measurement and observation, the universe was not the same. Was it chaotic? It was not a filter, which is far more than far more fundamental than far more profound than, than chaotic. chaotic. It allowed in non-collapsed states, not only collapsed states. To, to me, that's chaos because you. Yeah. Because at, not not chaos. No. Bear with me because I'm linking now to chronon okay, field. Okay. Okay. Before we started to measure, there was no filter, so everything was allowed in. It's like you don't have a bouncer in a bar; anyone can enter. You know. And everything collapse, not collapse. You're welcome. You're part of the wave function. Enter, please. Okay. Okay. What what do we what do we call a situation where anyone can enter? A field of potentials. Because every everything, everything can happen. Everything can happen. It's a field of potentials, which is why I designed my Cronon field theory as a field of potentials. I believe that the universe started as a Cronon field. In other words, I believe that the universe started as a field of potentials where all outcomes were allowed. The least probable, the most probable, the, col the collapse, the all outcomes were allowed. Okay. So it was a field of potentials. Until? Until sentience and one of the potentials was realized and became intelligent. The, the observer. The observer. The observer could have been, as far as I'm concerned, a bacterium or an algae. I don't know. Life. So there was life. life. Life was one of the potentials. It was life. The minute there was life, there was observation and measurement. Even if it was not strict in a laboratory, right. but a dinosaur probably observed and measured. Yes, to be able to, to survive. To be able to survive. The minute there was life, measurement and observation started. The minute measurement and observation started, the universe became a filter. And from that moment, it allowed in only collapsed states. The universe has, had, had two states, as a field of potentials, and then as an observer-determined filter. The only place where I differ from the current interpretations of quantum mechanics is that I'm saying, the minute you establish the filter, you can rest, okay. go and rest. So I think yeah. this is the point where we can rest. Yes.